told you, we're not going to be having kind of like a traditional spot today. We will be doing more activity, more discussion. I really want you guys here and in prayer to, um, to discuss because we can have different ideas. We might have people that were just for talking about diabetes today, but um, you might have ideas, you might have personal experience, whether it was yourself or with your family member or friends. It'd be nice to discuss and bring up things so we can have discussion or we can have write things that you find. Can only talk so much, so everybody can bring in their own input, and I would appreciate that. Um, so I will probably take the minutes after we finish this up because I'm recording and I want to finish this. If you're absent, you don't want to be all over the world. But <laughs> so, like I said, we will be talking about um, using this beach ball. Basically, I'm going to throw it to whoever's not focused with us. No, I'm just kidding. If you have a crystal ball, and wherever your right hand, your right hand thumb. Um, drops or falls, it would be uh, the question that you would have, but it's not going to be putting you under pressure. Everybody else will be answering the same question, so it's going to be discussion for that specific topic uh, that you got. So just it's up to you to read the question, and if you want, you'll be the first person uh, to answer if you want to. If not, everybody else can pitch in, and I want everybody to pitch in even after. Don't worry, I'm going to throw this to you first since I see that you're very nervous. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, you. <laughs> All right. So I understand prior. I can't. So I can't throw this to you, but I want to discuss this, these topics with you guys. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Okay. So again, let's put it. And, and this is once again not putting emphasis just on diabetes. Oh, take notes for the case study. This is going to reflect carbohydrates and Michael's case. All right, so make sure you're taking notes because the things that I want to see. I mean, if you explain it to my folks, oh, right? For example, you can write a question for my book, you know, say you might have a question about this, and you can answer all of it in your own form as long as you're writing some of the things that you're talking about. You can just take my notes, right? Again, it's not necessarily <laughs> type 2 diabetes specifically. Well, I don't have my life you know, today. Across even type 1, or but it's really something that. that affects a lot of people, but, but it also can reflect us as well. Because we're talking about blood glucose, and everybody needs glucose in their bloodstream. It's the only fuel for our brain. Our brain can only function through glucose, so whether it be from a direct carbohydrate that will directly produce glucose, uh, or it can be from a protein or fat, a uh, lipid, uh, that can go through a process known as glucogenesis and also produce glucose. Either way, we need glucose as a major source of energy for our body. So like we need, and, and to do that, we need to have a certain amount of glucose in our bloodstream too, so that our fuel, kind of like in your car, we always has gas. You don't want it to go to empty, and then you don't have problems. The car will turn off, or will turn off, right? And so we want that to have a consistent amount of glucose, but we don't want it to go too low, then we become hypoglycemic, and that's, again, low fuel. Um, or we can go too high, and that's hyperglycemia, and we don't want glucose in our bloodstream. And it can, Kind of like my idea of how to explain things is kind of like burn our uh, other cells, whether it's our nerve cells or whatever. Again, whether diabetic or not, it just diabetes is kind of like when we zoom into something and it shows us a bigger picture, but it really applies for everybody. Um, is that, like I said, the glucose don't want to be high. And then the type of carbohydrates we need to choose. There's some that are high glycemic index, other that are low glycemic index. Both are very important. This conception of saying, no, I need to stay away from uh, added sugar. Yes, you do need to stay away from added sugar as much as you can. We don't want it a lot. But there are times where added sugar, our simple sugar, our table sugar, or the candy, whatever, can become an emergency um, and, and sometimes a lifesaver, especially in terms of high blood pressure, which starts from low, especially among diabetics. Okay? So we don't want to eliminate anything. We, don't, we never have, I don't believe personally, that there's bad food. There's just food that we need to minimize the intake and others that we need to kind of emphasize and, and increase more of that intake of it. Okay? Um, I think Bartis is coming in as well. Bartis, you guys are here? Yes. All right, good morning. Again, we're going to be using this speech box to, um, as, we, as we do this activity, it's a discussion activity. Um, I want you guys to answer kind of questions and kick in. Hopefully, you can hear us. I'll be turning the, the camera. Um, the other camera, if I can do that, so that, okay. here we go, hello, <laughs> nice to see you. All right, so, let me switch the marker. Oh, the other camera over there. Okay, so we will turn this uh, camera up. Basically, you're all set. Okay, there we go. 
All right, so again, we're going to be throwing out this beach ball. I thought this is called the diabetes beach ball, um, but it has questions on it. And I'll throw it to one student wherever you're ready. So right hand thumb uh, lands will be your question. You can, all you have to do is just read out the question loud to the big community, also on other hands. Uh, but also, uh, you will be the first person that can answer if you want to answer. If not, and even though I'm going to throw it back to the students, and I want a discussion on all three campuses so we can hear you. Hopefully, you guys can hear us. And we will begin. Oh my God, I'm sorry. True or false? A machine that tests my blood sugar is called a glucometer. Glucometer. Yes. So true or false? A machine that tests glucose uh, blood glucose levels is called glucometer. True. 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 So it's a meter. It measures, it measures right? And glucose means glucose, <coughs> right? How does it work? Yeah. You take the blood from you use a lantern. <laughs> And you take a blood and it calculates the glucose that's in your blood. Okay. Did you guys hear her in prior or No. No. Can you try speaking a little bit louder? I, think that's I can try. Um, you take a lancet and you prick the end of your finger and then you put a drop of it on a test strip in the machine and it reads the glucose that's in that, that particular drop of blood. Okay. Did you hear her now? Yes. Yes. Fire yes. Yay. All right, so anybody else want to add on? What else can you guys explain about that, about the glucometer? And how does it work? Are there different types? Yes. Can you see this? Okay, what is it? Oh, shoot. Yeah, I can see it. This is a glucometer. Okay, can you explain to us how it works? Okay, so these are your test strips. Mm -hmm. So you'll put the test strips in the machine. Like so, and it'll give you a prompt for blood. So you'll prick your finger with your lancet, okay. and you'll apply the blood onto here, and then it'll count down, typically from five, and it'll give you your blood glucose reading. All right, great. Can you guys, did you guys hear her? Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, she's saying that what she's measuring really is the blood glucose level and the blood stream now. Now, anybody, any of us, if we were to be diabetic or not, like I said, it's just kind of zooming in when we talk about diabetes, it's just a bigger picture of what everybody goes through. When we eat our food, we, especially carbohydrates, and more protein than fat, but specifically carbohydrates, when we, um, when we start to break it down, basically digesting that food to the smaller particles, the smaller pieces where we can't even see it anymore, uh, the, the outcome of it, most of the time, or the majority of it, is glucose. And so what that glucose does, it runs into our bloodstream, right? It leaves our small intestines, goes to our bloodstream, and, and flows there, and then it goes, it's supposed to enter the cell so that we can make energy out of it, because we don't produce energy unless it enters the cell. So what happens is that uh, that, that glucose, it, it's usually uptaken by, by what, horm what hormone? What hormone takes in glucose into the cell? Yeah. What pulls it in? Because we don't want it to stay in the bloodstream. Only a certain amount can stay in the bloodstream. The rest you go in. Insulin. Insulin is the hormone that will take it in. So I always explain insulin um, as if it's a, it's a pickup truck, right? Or one of those dumpster trucks or whatever it is. So when we, and this goes back to the high glycemic index and low glycemic index as well, I will um, explain if I can turn this up now and turn this down to show the. Can you guys see the board? Do you want me to turn this? I'm shorting it. Can you guys see the board uh, here? Our home prior? From the screen, I don't know about half of it. No. Okay. Can I see this slide here? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what happens is that there's two kinds of uh, carbohydrates some that have a high glycemic index, and the other has a low glycemic index. The high glycemic index means as soon as we digest it, so remember when we said we digest the carbohydrates with our amylase, our salivary amylase, right? Our hormone, the knife actually breaks down the hormone. What happens is that when the, if, it's, if it's a simple sugar, meaning kind of like our table sugar or honey or things that have that simple sugar in it, basically if you think about it, there are two sugars attached. So the first knife kind, the first enzyme that actually hits it will split it into monosaccharides, so they're able to enter our bloodstream. They're small enough. They need to be one sugar to be able to enter my small intestine, to be able to, to leave my small intestine and swim in my bloodstream, right? And so they're now too attached, but once I put it in my mouth, it's simple sugar. Sucrose is a disaccharide, it's two sugars. So now I ate the simple sugar, whether it was candy, it was chocolate, it was something like that, something sweet, something that will have added sugar. So I add it, put it in my mouth, right? Salivary amylase will squirt on it, basically, from your saliva, on it, and break it. 
right there. It's ready to go, right? And so it'll go directly into my bloodstream. It just goes wiggle all the way through and it's ready to be digested. It directly goes into my bloodstream, right? So what does it do? If it's ready, it doesn't have to break like my starch where the thousands attached, that takes time. The one that breaks down right away will actually spike my bloodstream. It's being thrown right away into my bloodstream, right? From here directly, it just goes right, it just slides right through. It doesn't need to be digested anymore. So it enters my bloodstream, but this is going in so quickly because depending on the amount of glucose that you, you consume, right, it's going in so quickly into my bloodstream that it's spiking my glucose. As it spikes that glucose, as it's being thrown out of nowhere, kind of, into my bloodstream, insulin has to compensate because if, it, if it glucose goes up, this should be safe, for example, that's the normal, this is where it should be, that's the line where it should be. But as I said, whether you eat whatever kind of food, your glucose levels will increase, right? But it shouldn't spike, it should be gradual. With my high glycemic <coughs> index, what happens is that it spikes really quickly. See that, that quick spike that happens, right? What happens to compensate for that to bring it down because the, the pancreas will get a signal saying, hey, hey, I have high glucose. All of a sudden, poor thing is kind of like sleeping, have nothing to do, and then all of a sudden it's like, hurry, hurry, right? Because it's, it's spiking, it's, it's a shock to the system. So the pancreas doesn't have time to even think, right? So what happens is starts to dump glute insulin. It leads to hyper, just like hyper means, so hyper means high, just like hyper glycemia, hyper glucose, high glucose. We also get a hyper insulinemia, hyper insulin, high insulin, right, at the same time. So we get a dump of this and a dump of that. What happens is that insulin might be, because it doesn't have time to think. Right? Doesn't have time to think of safer stuff. I have a thousand glucose that's coming out. So I need a thousand dumpsters or a thousand trucks to throw it in. So say for example, this room is a this room is a is a cell, right? And outside that hallway is the bloodstream, it's carrying all of my nutrients, it's carrying carbohydrates, fat, proteins, all my amino acids, all my uh, free fatty acids and all that stuff, and then also all the glucose is swimming into what I want to do in a normal scenario or an abnormal scenario is I want to bring that in to the cell so I can produce energy, right? The one that will actually take it and pull it in, whether carb, fat, or protein, influence for everything, will take it into kind of like that dump truck, fill it up, throw it into the cell, fill it up, throw it into the cell. As it's doing that, it's taking it from the bloodstream, so my glucose levels are going down, because I'm looking at blood glucose levels, right? As it's taking it, it's cleaning it out, kind of, taking it, I'm scooping it out of the bloodstream, throwing it into my cell. Scooping out of my bloodstream, throwing it to my cell. So my glucose levels go down. That's why insulin lowers blood glucose levels. Does that make sense? Right? So it's lowering it down. And it's entering the cell. I want it to enter the cell. But imagine if it gets a shock of, say, a thousand glucoses, for example, are, are produced from that simple sugar, from that added sugar that I had, but then had no time to think, so it released 2,000 insulin out there. Right? Because it had to score anything just to compensate. And so now what it's doing is taking those thousand glucoses that I need to bring in to bring it to a normal level, but then it's taking more because I have more cars out there, I have more dumpsters coming in, right? And dump trucks or whatever you call them, right? And it's taking even more, so I'm now below the normal. It's taking too much, more than it needs to from the bloodstream. I need to have a certain amount of glucose to remain in the bloodstream so that my brain can function at a normal, a normal rate at a normal level, right? What happens is that I have a thousand workers coming out, so they're coming, or two thousand workers coming out. So instead of grabbing just a thousand glucose that will bring it back to normal, it's grabbing two thousand now. So it brought it below normal. Is this why you like have that crashing feeling? Exactly. Perfect. That's what it is. And so what happens is that we crash and you feel like you're starting to feel sleepy, you start to feel dizzy, or start to feel like you're not here, right? Sometimes people feel nauseated. They feel like they want to throw up. Sometimes people feel like they have to, their stomach is hurting, right? It doesn't necessarily have to grow up, but kind of like a uh, you know, kind of, you're, it's some, kind of like some kind of weak stomach pain, right? Nausea. Because they're hypoglycemic. Sometimes you don't feel it like that. The way you feel it is that you start to, for example, you come to class, you start out with a cookie or a donut or a coffee that has sugar in it, and you're good and you're all awake, and then halfway through the class, you start to fall asleep. That's not you being a bad student. What's happening is that you got the spike, yes, you woke up. But this takes about 30 to 35 minutes to start to go down again. Because insulin doesn't take time, to, it's working, and it's squirting out a lot. So now you're becoming, not only you're here, this is where you want it to come, so now you're still good in class, right? You're still awake and everything's fine, but this is halfway through the class. Starting to still run low because you still have insulin in your bloodstream. Because you shocked it. Does that make sense? So as we consume a, a, a simple sugar, 
the more you eat it, you notice if you start out your day with a with a with a sweet something sweet, you end up eating something sweet throughout the day. We call it kind of like people who try to throw it on our sweet tooth, right? But what it is is that you're going up and down, up and down, up and down throughout the day. When your body craves something, most of the time it's really it really needs it. So when you start to run low, your fuel for your brain is starting to run low. So we crave something sweet because it needs it right away. It's not you looking for something sweet. It's just it needs fuel right now. And the only thing that can do that is a simple sugar. Is your added sugar? Is your something sweet? Right? So as soon as it hits your mouth, it breaks. Now it brings it back to normal. Ah, now my brain is relaxed. I'm good. But 30 minutes later, you'll look for something else because you're going to start crashing all over again. Right? But how is this good in our normal scenario <coughs> and in our diabetic scenario? Why is a simple sugar sometimes very, very important? Tell me, prior and bars go, clear more everybody. Tell me why can a simple sugar be important in some time? Because I told you in the very beginning, no nutrients is bad, and we actually need all of our nutrients. Simple sugars uh, can raise your blood sugar quicker in diabetics. So diabetics can go low. Sometimes they're afraid to eat too much. If they that their glucose, glucose level might go up high too much, they might not eat enough, especially when you are already low, you feel nauseated, you really don't. I see it from my nephew is where I'm telling you this experience. Sometimes he just shuts down does not want to eat. And his glucose levels are low and he feels that kind of nausea. And he doesn't, you've tried it before, right? When you're sick, for example, and you don't feel like you want to eat, but you have to. And, we, and he's fine. And we try to push him to do things which is not eating. Uh, but he just shuts down. He doesn't want to eat. So he starts to run low. Sometimes, for whatever reason it is, he might have taken a little bit more insulin than he needs. Just like our body kind of produces sometimes a little bit more than he needs. So he starts to run low. It becomes, becomes very important. He has his own table, his own cabinet of sweets right there, of that sugar, of that you know candy, of chocolate, whatever it is. He always has it with his parents in his pocket because we give it to him. Obviously, he's going to eat everything. So they always have to have that with them, right? Anybody else have experienced something to add about a simple sugar in terms of diabetics? If you put it under the tongue, it's absorbed faster? Yeah, so there's those glucose, uh, they, they can be gel or there's tablets or whatever. Those are pure glucose and that can also increase. So because it's already digested, right? So not digested, but it's already pure glucose, right? Anyone else want to add something to this before we go to low glycemic index? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, simple sugars tend to leave your body quicker than complex carbs. They can what? So they, they leave your body quicker, so you'll work them off. If you're doing something, you can eat a simple sugar, and you'll work it off quicker than you would, say, um, like spaghetti. Uh, that's a complex carb as opposed to, like, a candy bar. You'll work it that's, off quicker. Yes, and that's a good addition. It's not really working it off quicker as much as it is that insulin being produced more, and so it's pulling it in faster, right? What we do is complex sugars, such as starches, for example, which is our low glycemic index, right? Those are ones that are thousands of glucose attached together. And so imagine, they can only be broken so much in our, in our mouth, right? And then we swallow it. Remember, it goes through the esophagus, nothing happens there. Stomach, nothing happens there because our amylase is deactivated in the stomach. The, the, the end digestion of our our polysaccharides or our starches happens in the small intestine. And so it starts to break there gradually as our pancreatic amylase starts to break it down gradually. So basically you have the majority of your starch being digested in the small intestine. So we didn't break up here in the mouth, right? Where it gave the, such as a simple sugar. It's really, really starts to break significantly in the small intestine. And it starts to break there gradually. So it's giving you pumps of glucose in the bloodstream, not shocking it. And so it gives time for the pancreas, the way I like to think about it, it gives time for the pancreas to kind of process what's coming to it. And therefore, it can give the right amount of insulin that it needs to complicate. So we don't go low and hyperglycemic. It gets you back to the normal level more, right? So it's like time release medication. It's kind of like time release, <laughs> yes, exactly. But each time it's giving you a different pump, right? And so the, basically the, the, the pancreas kind of has time to quote unquote think about what's coming to it and so it can process the right amount. Does that make sense? So we call that the low glycemic index. And those are examples of starches. So instead of this spike that happens here, what happens with the low glycemic index is that it will, I think it up so they can see it on the screen, it will increase gradually, right? It will increase gradually in this, kind of like what this looks like, right? 
And so the pain, the insulin also has time to think about it, and also the insulin will be released, released gradually. Does that make sense? So when is a good time to add a complex sugar to my diet? They're all going to produce glucose. They're all going to release insulin. But when is a good idea to include a, a starch or a complex sugar? When your sugar levels are normal. When your sugar levels are normal, but you're going to need it, yeah. right? When is another good time to add, or who wants to add on to that? Complex sugars or starches that release slowly and gradually. In the morning? Who said that in the morning? Yeah, so in the morning would be a very good option. Uh, if you know that you might not have a carbohydrate throughout the day, or you know that you're going to take time maybe to, to eat before you eat, so a complex sugar would be good in the morning. Um, a protein would be good in the morning because protein takes time to digest. Uh, it takes a lot longer time to digest, so you feel full for a longer time. But in terms of diabetes, in terms of when we need fuel right away for the brain, uh, it, it will be a complex sugar, it will be a much better option unless we're low on glucose. So using that glucometer that we, that we talked about, measuring where our glucose levels are really kind of tells you where you need. If you need a complex sugar or if you need added sugar, you need a, you know, something to be right there at the time moment to get it back to where it needs to be and then we get with insulin again. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense in terms of how these work. But like I said, it's just emphasized with diabetes that everybody would need that. We also see it among um, uh, athletes, for example, when it's game day. How many of you guys are athletes? So what do you guys eat on game day? What's your meal look like? Well, I, oh my, on game day or like the day before? Game day, but you play golf, right? I do so. I mean, I do. <laughs> I do so. I Golf. Golf. So your meals might be different. Golf, so golf for instance, if you've got basketball, baseball will be much different than, than golf, right? What's your what's golf look like the meal day game day? Is it different? Yeah, because we, we get up really early to be at the course at a certain time and we're back we play for like four hours. Okay. And we don't have time to eat or anything like that. So we'll have to snack or do something throughout the round. Okay. So we usually won't eat lunch. So, is your lunch different? Mm -hmm. Is it, what is it, is that different in? Like, I don't know, we just, we eat more like, okay, it's a weird time, like, we eat at weird times during the show. Yes, and that's what I was trying to get to, because now if you ask somebody cross country, or you ask somebody baseball or basketball, their meal day, or their like, game day meal is very different, it's high in starch, and it will be, right? Who, who wants to give us an example of what their meal day looks like? Yeah, and I'll spoke to you guys. Go ahead. Uh, I travel a lot with uh, competitive soccer, uh -huh. and so when we go down there, we don't really get to eat a lot of things that we'd like rather eat. We mm -hmm. usually just have sandwiches that we make to eat on the road, and then the night before, because we'll have games Saturday and Sunday, uh -huh. the whole team goes to somewhere, and everybody gets pasta. Pasta. Pasta and water, that's all we get. Right. Are your games usually in the morning? Yes. Yeah. Good All right. Who, who else wants to do this? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I usually like my no day or like prepping for like a race or something. Yeah. It starts like two days before. So, like on Thursday, I'll have my carbs. And then Friday, I'll have protein. And then in the morning, um, I'll have eggs, a biscuit, a banana. Mm -hmm. And then um, I won't pretty much eat anything on, like after that. You will or won't? I won't because I, I'm one of those people that if I eat an hour or like 30 minutes close to I'm about to run, you're probably going to see that after I run. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So, like I said, it depends on, do you want to ask something? Yeah. I, uh, like for baseball, we, our season's like two months. We play 52 games those two months. So, we have to kind of sustain for playing almost every day or every other day. And uh, we need to like, keep our mind sharp as a pitcher or whatever. So, my mom will give me like, Chick-fil-A sandwiches an hour before, and she'll give me two of them, and I'll have one in, and then, um, like, a couple of innings in, I'll have the second one, but, like, take it slow so that I don't, you know, feel super sluggish, mm -hmm. and then close to the end, my bunch will always have, like, those little sour patch watermelon things, uh -huh. and that gives me that little um, push of blood sugar to get me through, like, at least five percent. So that mid-game is when you take that, that snack, so yeah. that's your added sugar, but before that, it's starch, so it's a complex sugar, including protein, right? right? So that will give you that short release, it'll give you constant energy, but it will be shorter and release, it'll take time to actually release. The protein will keep you full, the starch will start to give you that small pump throughout the heat. So again, if you've you heard this, 
depending on when or what time the game is, depending on what type of game you play, if you have to prep before, if you have to prep after. But the majority of them, if they require uh, muscle strengthening or so it require muscle activity or running or there'll be more starch carbohydrate uh, built um, uh, diet as opposed to other diets that will be snacking in the middle because it's a long day but you really don't put a lot of physical quote unquote effort into it right so it's very very different again that's when those low glycemic index foods come into play and it's very important to keep that constant uh, pump. does that make sense to you guys prior barnes does that make sense yeah were you guys able to hear the students' question, um, discussions? Yes. Okay. Who else wants to get this? I'm going to throw. By the way, I'm a bad thrower, just heads up. Sometimes people, my friends that know me, stay away from behind me because I tend to throw and I go behind. I don't know why. I've been doing this a very good. They know. I'm like, just throw you around. Stay away. <laughs> True or false, glycosylated hemoglobin or A1C is a test done every three months to tell if your blood sugars are in good control. Okay, glycosylated hemoglobin or H1C, uh, HB1, A1C, whatever they want to call it, um, is a test that is done every three months to test uh, blood glucose levels, control blood glucose levels, right? Mm -hmm. True or false? True. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you guys say true or false? Prior Brad, so what do you say? True. True. Nope. How many of you guys here say true? Who says false? Who doesn't know what it is? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, who can explain to us what H1B, H1B, A1C, or A1C is? Who can explain it to us? Well, that, no. Yeah. No? I think it's um, the how to determine if you are diabetic or not, right? It's not how to determine. Well, they can do it to use to see if you determine if you're diabetic long term to see your control of glucose. What it's done, the test that's done, uh, it's a blood test that's done to see your control over a certain period of time of your glucose levels. So if it went, if it was high for a long period of time, your H1C or A1C would be higher to, to the normal. And then uh, if it was not controlled, it would be higher or lower. But usually, if, you're un if it's uncontrolled, glucose levels, it would be higher. And that really gives you an indication of saying maybe we need to change our diet, maybe we need to change medication, uh, or both. Maybe we need to change physical activity, or all combined, or some of them. Is that the test they do when you're, like, going to have a baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, that is. And um, you're fasting before. Yeah. And then you drink the solution. Yes. And then they test you. Well, that's the glucose tolerance test. Okay. okay. They're not looking at H1B. Uh, they're okay, so the A1C when you're fasting and then they draw your blood? That's glucose tolerance. Okay. That's the fasting glucose when you're fasting and they, they draw your blood and they look at your glucose. You're going to come in from fasting anyways. And it's also, it's also one of the tests that they do for diabetics as well. to test diabetes for uh, um, pre-diabetics. Uh, and it's called the glucose tolerance test, GGT. Uh, and what it is is that they... Uh, we'll, you come in fasting, and they will give you a uh, glucose solution. It's way too sweet where you just barely really take gross. it. You have to drink it all at once. Right? So they take your blood test. Uh, <clears throat> they take a blood test before taking that solution. And then they give you that, blood, that, that solution to drink, and then they test you again. They tell you exactly 30 minutes after. Uh, so they're going to see where it actually grows and where it got to. And then they want to see how fast it can go back to normal. Depending on how fast it can go back to normal, that really tells me if the insulin the pancreas is responding to that glucose uh, kind of glucose that, that we gave it or not, or if it's responding sort of slowly. And then from that, we get an indication of uh, do we have a response to the pancreas? Do we have a low response to the pancreas? Because remember, that's a huge dump of glucose that's going into the bloodstream. When you're fasting, so that's kind of like control or baseline. There's, the, the glucose is at the right level, maybe below normal, right? Because you're fasting. But then after that, when you give it that shock of glucose, we'll spike. So it's a low glycemic index, right? It'll give it that spike that will go up. And then after that, they will come in and measure it again, see if it's starting to go down or not within 30 minutes. Because it should get to a certain level. It's not going to go completely normal 30 minutes, but it should get to a certain level uh, within 30 minutes, what's considered to be normal or uh, not normal at the time. And that's, it is one of the um, tests that are done for uh, diabetics, but also for you know, gestational diabetes as well. So when pregnant women, right, that's called gestational diabetes. Uh, but then the other one is the 
the, the A1C, and that one is the hemoglobin itself, the one that the protein that, that carries oxygen, or the iron that, well, the hemoglobin the protein carries iron that carries oxygen, but then the hemoglobin can also attach to glucose, and at the time when they do their blood test, you can see the glucose that's attached to the hemoglobin uh, A1C or blood, like hemoglobin, whatever they want to call it. Um, and that gives me an indication of how much control I have glucose over a period of time, three months, four months. And it's, so we see if, if a person, for example, has already been diagnosed with being diabetic, if they have good control. Uh, and again, it's an indication of uh, do I need to change medication? Do I need to combine? Do I need to change diet? Do I need to change physical activity or all? Or if it's good and it's controlled, then we remain on what we're doing, right? And if somebody was thinking of might, they might have had diabetes over a period of time or through the GTT, we kind of determined that they might be diabetic and that would be done three times, three individual times to, to really diagnose diabetes. It could be three, you can, you know, at that day, you could have, or the day before, maybe eat something new sweet or something that could affect. Anyways, they try to do it three different days to really indicate uh, if somebody's diabetic. And then they look at the H1C to, or the A1C to make sure that uh, if they have, how long it might have been if it was in control and things like that. So it's a different test. Glucose tolerance test is different from the end. Does that make sense? Right? All right, where did our beach ball go? All right, you want to throw it back because I can't throw any farther than that. Let's see how athletic I am, right? <laughs> Should I wear a bracelet that says I have diabetes? Should I wear a bracelet that says I have diabetes? Yeah. Yes. 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 A bracelet or what else do we use? And the necklace. Necklace, there's people that do tattoos, right? What else? You want to say tattoos? Oh, yeah, I was going to say tattoos. All right. What else? I've never heard any of these. There's keychains. Yeah, there's keychains. Somebody says, I am diabetic. Why should somebody say, I'm diabetic? Why should somebody say, I have this disease or I, whatever whatever it is that has to be diabetes? Why would somebody want to say? Can you something goes wrong? Somebody can help them and get them what they need. Okay, okay something goes wrong. What can go wrong? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, so they, if the, they know if there's anything that they can't do. Like any kind of medication. Exactly, it's what they can and what they can't give them, right? What else? Why would somebody do something like this? Sometimes if you have something that indicates that you have diabetes, they check that first mm -hmm. and can rule out any other issues. Yes, yes. So it'll be more of, you know, to be able to, at least to know what to do for that person if, if for whatever reason they uh, lost conscience or were not able to talk or for whatever reason it is, at least you know, like you said, to, to head right away and know what to do and what not to do. Um, for that individual instead of sitting there taking time to kind of rule out different things and then at the very end realize that they're diabetic, right? So it is very important. There's also the do not recitate and all those kind of resuscitate, whatever we call it, for those different, whatever whatever reason it may be, okay? All right, where did that, right, throw it wherever you want. Oh, oh, somebody's getting hit. Back of your head, there you go. There you go. I have no idea. <laughs> what is not a fat? Butter, potato, oil, or margarine? What is potato. not a fat? Butter, potato, oil, or margarine? Potato. Potato. Potato is not a fat. What is potato? Starch. So what kind of glycemic index would it be? Low. Low glycemic index because we'll break down clothes. So it's starch, right? Right. So it's one of the good, uh, not, I'm not saying good or bad carbohydrates, but it's one of the carbohydrates that will keep your glucose or your glucose levels um, start. Again, I don't say go for potatoes as much as you want. Everything needs to be in moderation and everything needs to be done at a certain time, certain quantity. Right? Right, good. So, I don't want potatoes and vegetables. <laughs> yeah, right. It even depends on how you prepare, right? The potatoes are different how you prepare. What is not in the milk, food groups? Cheese, milk, yogurt, or popcorn? Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> I was gonna say, so look, this is my this is my Jeez, funny kind of funny funny black like, company. Um, when popcorn I when I came to I my master's in my chemistry against what but then I decided to switch to, to nutrition, do my doctoral degree. So for me, I know how things work in the body, but nutrition wise I didn't really think about it. So first time I came to the department. One of the reasons I didn't make much friends, I'm just kidding, I made a lot of friends, but <laughs> yeah, I always had to see, because when I first showed up, somebody came to the lab and said, hey, the student lounge, there's, there's, there's poison if you guys want something to eat, and there's whatever, they called it poison, 
I was like, really, what is that? What kind of people? Where am I? Why did the boys in the student mom? Do they really hate us that much? <laughs> I mean, I know how I feel, but I mean, come <laughs> on. Anyway, so I went to the student mom just out of curiosity to see what it's the poison. It has to be a beautiful box of donuts, like all different kinds of donuts, like colored, whatever, sprinkled everything on. I was like, whoa, this is good. I don't care if they call it poison, I mean, whatever. I would go for it. And then after that, I would see, I mean, they would come in with their, when it's lunchtime, they would come with all their nutritional meals and whatever, and soups, and, you know, kind of like, they know what they're doing. I had no idea what to do. And then I would come in with my, you know, hamburger sandwich, french fries, whatever. It was good for me. I was like, <laughs> lunchtime, right? It was good. Anyways, I'll be the, the outlier, as you can imagine, on that table. And then I don't sit with them anymore. I just take my side. <laughs> so nobody, you know, don't judge me. So anyways. After that, I would see after lunch, maybe an hour or two, everybody has this patch of popcorn. And here, you smell popcorn all over the hallway. What does everybody have? The microwave, whatever. What are they doing with the popcorn? It's supposed to be. They called just a little while ago. They called donuts poison, and they were eating all these different soups and whatever. And like now, popcorn. In my mind, popcorn was unhealthy, right? But then, I mean, the more I started to learn about nutrition, I thought they did. I asked the professor. I said, "Oh, but it's not, no students were judging but the professor." I asked, and she said, "Well, I mean." You don't add salt or butter or whatever to it, but popcorn in general, corn obviously is very um, healthy, but then the, the popcorn itself and the corn is high in fiber. And so what it does is that, one, it's nutritious. Remember when I talked to you guys about fiber and how after the lunch and absorbs all the bad things that they might have. They probably didn't do anything on the lunch. I need a lot of that fiber, depending on my lunch and what it looks like. But still, it'll absorb all the, all the extra that we have in our body. And it also makes them full for the remaining of the day, so until lunch, until dinner time comes in or whatever snack is coming up. So it makes them feel full because fiber holds on to water, right? So it makes people feel full. Me, I had that French fries and burger and whatever half an hour later. I'm crashing and I'm getting hungry again. And these girls were just running all over the lot like nothing there. And whoa, I'm hungry. I'm ready to go home. My stomach is growling and everything, right? And so there's some secrets in there. So popcorn is healthy, uh, but it, it has that fiber, which is a carbohydrate as well. But butter and sugar, that's a whole different, uh, butter and salt, that's a whole different aspect of it. But the corn itself is healthy, so go for it. I'm giving you the green light, it's just like making butter. <laughs> All right. I a whole bunch of like, eight, like, you know, the whole Asian stuff. Right? Just like, like the Middle Eastern yeah. stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like Asian, like, I love Middle Eastern food. <laughs> like, um, like a lot of people, they always do because they're like, you know how everyone always like, like says the boiled chicken is disgusting and stuff. The what chicken? Boiled, boiled chicken. Boiled chicken is disgusting. What? Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people just tell me that boiled chicken is gross. It's like it's not right. I was just like, oh, because I eat boiled chicken. Hey, my culture, we have something called our nat our national food in my culture. As I call it, uh, uh, eyeball, and it's pretty much steamed chicken or boiled chicken. Okay. And literally, it's just that. They and just I, don't tell them the eyeball or I just don't see chicken. No. And, then, like, <laughs> and then, like, it's so good, though. It's just well, chicken, salt, and black pepper. And, yeah. that, and that's all. And it's the best thing ever. People say it's gross. And well, I don't agree with that. Well, believe it or not, that's how you make chicken broth. So. I think that's kind of like chicken oil soup without the noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've chicken, which made chicken dumplings. Exactly. I guess maybe people you're talking to don't know how to cook it. So when you suddenly <laughs> thought my mom was doing cake out of scratch, not like me, I make it out of the box. But my mom makes it out of scratch. Yeah, that's time, I guess. So my friend was there. He's the kind of kid that gets garage stuff in from everything. He's a mess. His room is a mess. Sink, everything's there. But whenever it comes to food, he's like really picky about things being really clean and the way they're done. And so he came to my mom. My mom was really, really clean. She, she was cracking an egg for the cake. And he was waiting for his grandma to make the cake. And he goes, oh, he almost threw up. And he goes, you put that in there? He saw how the egg was, you know, the egg was like when it's not raw. Ever since, I don't think he likes cakes. He keeps imagining it. But still, I mean, if you don't know how to cook and what goes into it, you might think something is gross, but they end up probably. A lot of cultures are very similar. It's just the way we kind of prepare things or maybe even name them. So, no, it's good. I eat it. So. <laughs> I also like, like, what is it? We eat, I eat like the livers and the hearts of the chicken mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Those are like the best. I don't know why people don't like them. Those are good. Yeah, I eat something, it's something that American culture really like. does not like. Uh, because I don't know, maybe the way they prepare it or something, but in other cultures, it's something wrong. Again, it's a very different. Like, we wouldn't do pig legs or pig, you know, pork in general. 
in my culture, but in other cultures they might. So it's very different where somebody, if you haven't even taken something, you might think it's not, it's not, the preparation would be different. So. All right. Okay, where did our beach ball go? Go for it. Is my blood sugar high or low if I have hyperglycemia? Is my blood sugar high or low if I have hyperglycemia? High. Okay, say hi in here. Prior Barbara's always say high or low. Hyper. High. Hyper. So the word hyper means high, so that means it's above the normal level. So what happens when my blood control level is hyperglycemia? To get it back normal, what happens? Pancreas. Pancreas releases insulin. I'm pulling back into the cell. You can add the blood sugar to the cell. If an individual is diabetic, insulin, they'll take insulin shot and they'll take it in. So in my, my theory, and I have, um, and, and I'm very focused on diabetes, even within my nutrition major, but specifically on diabetes. And my take on it with all the different things I know about it is I consider somebody that says, uh, diabetes can lead to, uh, you know, other uh, side effects, um, or it can be detrimental. And just stops there, doesn't know what they're saying. If they don't add on that sense of saying, if left uncontrolled, or those three words, of if left uncontrolled, they have no idea what they're talking about. Because basically what it is, and think about it like this, because this is becoming an epidemic, and it's going to happen now, we're most likely, hopefully not, but we might uh, develop it, or a family member might get it. So, Anyway, if left uncontrolled is significant because what it is, it's a hormone that we don't produce if you're type one or might not produce enough of if you're type two. And we basically just put it into our body. And I wish, really personally, I think, I wish a lot of these diseases were just based on a shot or being able to measure it and then everything comes back to normal. Any individual, diabetic or not, needs to watch out for their diet when we actually put it in our body. Any individual needs to watch out for their physical activity diabetic or not. We all need to watch out for our glucose levels and not make it high because again, it'd be converted back to fat and that can also damage our, our, our uh, organs, diabetic or not. So I really don't see a difference other than something that one person is able to produce, the other can actually get it in a second within a shot and we're done and everything is back to normal, right? And so really, well, my nephew was diagnosed with diabetes and on his first birthday, literally on the day of his birthday, went to, uh, went to the hospital, was almost done because they didn't know he was diabetic. They just didn't think about it. Um, but then um, uh, after that, my, his parents, his mom and his dad were, you know, devastated, I guess. And the first thing my brother told me when he called me, he said, listen, you know about diabetes. And you read the study about diabetes. And what do you think it is? He's like, I'm the uncle that, that gets, you know, candy for everybody. He's the one that always walks in with the candy, whatever, to all of his nephews and nieces or whatever. And he's like, I can't do it for my own son. And I said, you, that you're now in the midst of it, in the middle of it, but then later on, you're going to find that your son's going to eat more sweets than all the other kids are allowed to. And that's true. Now he has his own cabinet, and he shows off, it's like, my cabinet, nobody touches it. So he has, and he takes more sweets than everybody else. He can eat a normal diet. He can, you know, every once in a while, just like we can, when we should be our diet, is, you know, eat something crazy, and then just go back and put in your insulin. Yes, it shouldn't be all the time, just like all of us, diabetic or not, should not be all the time. We can have our free days. And it's normal. And the kid now is living a normal lifestyle, you know, prettier than all of our kids. And then you know, everything is normal. And it's, it's okay, right? And so the way we kind of think about things is really kind of how it comes back and how, how, how we live with things. And, and like I said, if an individual says, if doesn't say if left uncontrolled, believe me, that person has no idea what they're talking about. All right? You good? Where did our beach ball go? All right, go for it. Throw it anywhere else. You can do a question and throw it to her. When I have low blood sugar, I need to eat blank blank right away. When I have low blood sugar, I need to eat blank blank right away. Sugar. Can I get that? Or is it taped on? All right. It's like the finish of the word. Well, what does it say again? I was when I have like, low blood sugar, I need to eat blank blank. Right away. When you have low blood sugar, you need to eat what right away? When it's low blood sugar, right away. Simple sugar. A simple sugar. Why should why should we include a simple sugar? Because simple sugars are two sugars combined, and your amylase in your mouth can split those easily to get into your bloodstream. Exactly. So it's a high glycemic index. 
quickly. And I'm sure that's not to put you guys on the spot, but I really want to know how the freestyle works. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. All right. Can we see that? All right, go for it. Throw it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Hypoglycemia is another name for low blood sugar. Hypoglycemia is another name for low blood sugar. Sure, sure, yes. sure. Right, so high means, means low. All right, throw it somewhere else. Hey. Did you guys get a sense of how that ball is working here in the class? All right, ask your question. Increased thirst, increased urination, and stomach acids may be signs of high blood sugar. Okay, increased increased thirst, increased urination, urination and, and stomach acid. and stomach acid acid oh, ache, a stomach ache is a sign of can be a sign of diabetes. True or false? True. True. Okay, True. this is important. Not just in Michael's case study. Okay, why? Does a, can a, does a diabetic feel the sense of thirst and need uh, and urination constantly? Um, I it rids your body what? of the excess what sugar. It? it rids your body of the excess sugar. Exactly. By, um, and ketones. I don't know if you've heard of diabetic ketoacidosis. It's when there's too much sugar in your urine. And so it causes polydipsia uh, and polyuria, which is excessive urination and excessive thirst. Exactly, exactly. So basically, in a nutshell, um, and what it's doing is that our body has its normal toilet or its bodily toilet, what I like to call it, and it's our kidneys that flush things out. And so whenever we have high glucose levels that are uh, not able to be taken in, usually this is with the uncontrolled diabetes, especially with people that don't know that they're diabetic or when their glucose levels are high. Uh, what happens is that when our glucose is high, it means it's remaining in our bloodstream, it's not going in. Whether they need to take an injection of insulin or they don't know they need to be on insulin because they don't know they're diabetic. And so it'll stay in the bloodstream. What happens, our bodies, like I say all the time, our bodies are good to us, we're the ones that abuse it. But they're good to us and they always have a plan A, B, C, up to Z and whatever after. Uh, to, to, you know, to, to keep us healthy. And what happens is that when our glucose levels are high in our bloodstream and not able to enter the cell because the insulin is not there, um, or it can be a little, um, what it does is that it needs to get it out of that bloodstream. And so we tend to think, we, need to, we feel that, uh, what it does is that flushes it out of our bloodstream through our kidneys. So it flushes it kind of like you flush the toilet and we get it out. So our glucose levels go down. With that, we feel thirsty because our blood, uh, because when you use a toilet, for example, you see the water go out with it, right? It's not just the glucose itself, but it's also the water goes out with it. And so our water levels start to go low. And so we feel thirsty. So we drink water. And then our glucose remains to be high. And so it flushes it out. And our, now we need water to replace it. So we drink water. We go to the bathroom, water, bathroom, water, bathroom. Or it can be also the opposite. We drink a lot of water to dilute the amount of glucose, so it's a sugar in our bloodstream. So we dilute it with a lot of water. So drinking that water can actually dilute it. And then obviously that needs to be flushed out. When it gets to a certain point, just like if you would have in the, in the, in the toilet where it would get to a certain point and then it, it'll stop. With that, it goes higher. So if you bring it back to normal, we flush it out so it goes back to normal. And then we feel thirsty because now the water is flushed out. And it's a, it's a cycle of thirst and, uh, and urination, whether it's our water levels are going down so we need to compensate for the amount of water that we flush. And it's also to dilute that amount of sugar. Does that make sense? Make sense? Why? That's what happens in our body. That's why we say people that are diabetic that are undiagnosed or that have hyperglycemia at the time will feel thirsty and will urinate more. And so that's a sign of taking that medication um, or that hormone. And so that that's that's what uh, what, what happens with well, when we talk about diabetes. Because sometimes we know it's a sign, but we don't know why and what's happening. Right? Any questions about that, or anybody want to add anything to that? We're good? All right, so we want to actually ask you to explain that to Michael, because after that, we're going to put a diet for him that he needs to drink more water. And there's a reason for why he needs to drink more water, right? Because he eats about five times, and we don't really know what he drinks. Yeah, so eating out be... five times, we're going to change that habit to teach him how to eat and how to, what to do and, and compensate for it, right? I think we have time to throw it one more time, and then after that, we will, I'll take a time to pass our stuff recording. <laughs>
Uh, true or false, quick source of fast act acting sugar carbohydrates are graham crackers, regular soda, orange juice, and raisins. Say again. True or false, quick sources of fast acting sugar are graham crackers, regular soda, orange juice, and raisins. True or false? Those are two. True. Those are low glycemic index. Again, they can be used as an emergency, but we don't want to consume them all the time or at least on smaller quantities. Okay? All right, wait for attendance, but with that, we will conclude uh, today's class. We will continue maybe next week with uh, with this beach ball, or we'll do another activity. Anyways, with this, like I told you, we will, I uh, won't have all the time PowerPoint lectures. Uh, a lot of times we will have different activities, we'll have videos, uh, at least make things a little bit uh, here and more. All right, prior Brunsville, please stay in your class and probably take a minute. I'll just stop recording. Thank you.